Section number two of Lavender Lit 101. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Dreams, waking thoughts, and incidents in a series of letters from various parts of Europe by William Beckford, 1760 to 1844, British art collector, writer, wealthy author of the Oriental novel Vathek, in 1786. Letter 1 June 19th, 1780. Shall I tell you my dreams? To give an account of my time is doing, I assure you, but little better. Never did there exist a more ideal being. A frequent mist hovers before my eyes, and through its medium I see objects so faint and hazy that both their colors and forms are apt to delude me. Now, this is a rare confession, say the wise, for a traveler to make. Pretty accounts will such a one give of outlandish countries. His correspondence must reap great benefit, no doubt, from such purblind observations. But stop, my good friends, patience a moment. I really have not the vanity of pretending to make a single remark during the whole of my journey, if, be contented with my visionary way of gazing, I am perfectly pleased, and shall write away as freely as Mr. A, Mr. B, Mr. C, and a million others whose letters are the admiration of the politest circles. All through Kent did I doze as usual. Now and then I opened my eyes to take in an idea or two of the green woody country through which I was passing, and then closed them again, transported myself back to my native hills, thought I led a choir of those I loved best through their shades, and was happy in the arms of illusion. The sun set before I recovered my senses enough to discover plainly the variegated slopes near Canterbury waving with slender birch trees and gilt with a profusion of broom i thought myself still in my beloved solitude but missed the companion of my slumbers where are they behind yon blue hills perhaps or to the side of that thick forest my fancy was travelling after these deserters till we reached the town vile enough of conscience and fit only to be passed in one sleep the moment after i got out of the carriage brought me to the cathedral an old haunt of mine i had always venerated its lofty pillars dim aisles and mysterious arches last night they were more solemn than ever and echoed no other sound than my steps i strayed about the choir and chapels till they grew so dark and dismal that i was half inclined to be frightened looking over my shoulder thought of spectres that have an awkward trick of syllabling men's names in dreary places and fancied a sepulchral voice exclaiming worship my toe at ghent my ribs at florence my skull at Bologna, siena and rome beware how you neglect this order for my bones as well as my spirit have the miraculous property of being here there and everywhere these injunctions you may suppose were received in a becoming manner and noted all down in my pocket-book by inspiration for i could not see and hurrying into the open air i was whirled away in the dark to margate don't ask what were my dreams thither nothing but horrors deep vaulted tombs and pale though lovely figures extended upon them shrill blasts that sung in my ears and filled me with sadness and the recollection of happy hours fleeting away perhaps for ever i was not sorry when the bustle of our coming in dispelled these phantoms the change however in point of scenery was not calculated to dissipate my gloom for the first object in this world that presented itself was a vast expanse of sea just visible by the gleamings of the moon bathed in watery clouds a chill air ruffled the waves i went to shiver a few melancholy moments on the shore how often did i try to wish away the reality of my separation from those i love and attempt to persuade myself it was but a dream this morning i found myself more cheerfully disposed by the queer dutch faces with short pipes and gingerbread complexions that came smirking and scraping to get us on board their respective vessels but as i had a ship engaged for me before their invitations were all in vain the wind blows fair and should it continue of the same mind a few hours longer we shall have no cause to complain of our passage adieu think of me sometimes 
If you write immediately, I shall receive your letter at The Hague. It is a bright, sunny evening. The sea reflects a thousand glowing colors, and in a minute or two I shall be gliding on its surface. End of section two. Dreams, Waking Thoughts, and Incidents in a Series of Letters from Various Parts of Europe by William Beckford.